So Chapo Roan was in the news this weekend because she basically, as the headlines were saying, she, quote, complained about being famous. And I think that there's a conversation we can have around this that I find thrilling. And lots of celebrity females, women, did reply. And I thought that was really cool. Lots of people replied, but I found like particular ones that I was like, oh, interesting to hear from them. So we're going to go over it in just a second. But let's see what Chapel said initially to make people, you know, have this conversation. There's two videos. This is the first one that got posted 21 hours ago. I need you to answer questions. Just to answer my questions for a second. If you saw a random woman on the street, would you yell at her from the car window? Would you harass her in public? Would you go up to a random lady and say, can I get a photo with you? And she's like, no, what the f And then you get mad at this random lady? Um, would you be offended if she says no to your time because she has her own time would you would you stalk her family would you follow her around would you try to dissect her life and bully her online this is a lady you don't know um and she doesn't know you at all would you assume that she's a good person assume she's a bad person would you assume everything you read about her online is true i'm a random you're a random bitch. Just think about that for a second, okay? Okay, so that was the first initial video, and this is the second one. I don't care. And this one out came out, like, exact, almost at the same time, right? She also put a, a, um, a message just saying, do not assume this is directed at someone or specific encounter. This is just my side of the story and my feelings. And she did turn off comments for both of these posts. Here's the second video. I don't care that abuse and harassment, stalking, whatever... Is a normal thing to do to people who are um, famous or a little famous, whatever. I don't care that it's normal. I don't care that this crazy type of behavior comes along with the job, the career field I've chosen. That does not make it okay. That doesn't make it normal. I don't, it doesn't mean I want it. It doesn't mean that I like it. I don't want whatever the f you think you're supposed to be entitled to whenever you see a celebrity. I don't give a f if you think it's selfish of me to say no for a photo or for your time or to for a hug. That's not normal. That's weird. It's weird how people think that you know a person just because you see them online or you listen to the art they make. That's weird. I'm allowed to say no to creepy behavior, okay? I don't care that. Okay, so obviously some people had some issues with the word like creepy behavior as if to insinuate fans coming up to you for a picture is creepy or weird. I think more or less she's talking about the pressure to perform, which I actually think is really what this conversation is about. It's about the pressure to perform when you're a public figure or even somebody in the community that people look to as sort of a leader figure or the focus of attention. Now, some people love it. Some people get famous to have this lived experience. And I think this is what, you know, I and others, you know, say about being famous. It sounds really nice, but this is the disadvantage to being famous for a lot of people. This is the reason a lot of people choose not to pursue their art or their fame or they pursue or they or they purposely like cover their face or get a fake name or operate, you know, sort of differently in public than they would in private. And I think that for me, and this is something I caution myself when I'm like, especially when I'm manifesting, I always manifest for mid fame. I'm like, may I please have mid fame consistency in my career and may I retire doing this job, but don't make me famous enough to deal with like the pressures of actual fame because I don't want to deal with the pressures of actual fame. And I think that that is something that a lot of people don't understand. They really think every content creator, every creator, every singer, every actor wants to be famous. And I think what we want is stability in our jobs. I think like any of you, we just want to be stable in our work. And that usually if you're pursuing fame gives you sort of a, a consistency with that income, but also the disadvantages are not great. As we've seen, um, I mean, we could just take Justin Bieber as an example, his interactions with fans, his decline in mental health, his relationship with people. It doesn't look fun. I don't think it's worth the money. I don't think fame is worth the money. Fame is, in my mind, the consequence. But again, lots of people want to be famous, right? I think Trisha Paytas talks about this pretty frequently. All she wanted to be was famous. She didn't care how she got there. And it worked. Like, Trisha seeks fame and she does it. 
And I do think that personally, I'm not willing to do the things Trisha did to get famous. And I think that's just the line in the sand that we all draw for ourselves. Is there, and this is what I talk about with a certain level of like, um, dysfunctionality. I look at a Tana. I look at the Paul brothers. I look at all these people. Some of those people really did things that I would never be willing to do in order to become famous, in order to sort of be very wealthy, to afford these, you know, 12, $20 million mansions. So, it, you know, I don't know if being famous is that hard, but I do think, you know, making it into career, making it stable is hard, which Trisha and even the Paul brothers, they do that. Like they really solidified their fame, uh, and turned it into income, like permanent income, which I think is important. But I, again, I, I caution against people wanting this particular outcome without thinking about the consequences, you know? So obviously the people who are upset, I think we can all qualify them as like a little unhinged. Ultimately, if you feel entitled to anyone's time, including a celebrities, if you feel entitled to their relationship with you, I just think like the problem is you. I remember David Grohl from Foo Fighters and Nirvana, he was, you know, followed in the streets and people were like, sign this, sign this. And David only signs things for charity. And he's like, guys, I, my signature is only for charity. I'm not interested in doing this for you as a fan anymore. I don't do signatures. And the guys just didn't understand why they couldn't get an autograph. Like people don't process that celebrities have to make like pick and choose how they interact with their fans. You know, I think the objectification of celebrities isn't just, by the way, for girl bubbles. I say this a lot with Ryan Reynolds and I bring it up pretty often where men literally are like, Ryan Reynolds really made his real life into his job, like his real personality. Like they think the character Ryan Reynolds is playing is who he is. And sure, parts of it, but they're selling you a brand. If Ryan Reynolds was real, he'd probably sound like Chapel Roan. He'd probably say you guys are a bunch of losers who are middle-aged dressing up in costumes and thinking I'm your friend but also please go see my movie thank you so much hashtag Deadpool but also like there's nothing wrong with being middle-aged and dressing up in costumes it's just like this obsession with Ryan Reynolds this like Ryan Reynolds is such a cool guy man he's like he's like he could be I could be friends with him you could not be friends with Ryan Reynolds and I think Ryan would tell you that if he was honest but he doesn't instead he's just like hey bud what's up bud what's up bud <laughs> Anyways, you have fun with your Ryan Reynolds fantasies, guys. Okay. Um, you know, you have fun with that. Okay. Now, there were follow-up commentary done by other um, people in the sphere. So let's go to those ones because I think that will be interesting. Okay, hold on. What are you guys saying here? I'm pretty sure he said in interviews his character comes on anytime he has to perform. Like he hides his anxiety with being someone else during interviews and whatnot. I might be wrong though. I believe it. Male celebs have an easier time of being famous than women, which is to say they get more leeway for being douches while women celebrities need to be more accommodating, get a lot of heat. I mean, that's why Cher has that infamous interview or Cher in general has an infamous attitude about fame as a woman, especially where she's very clear about her boundaries and her, you know, what she's open to, but she's very clear that she's just doing what she wants. And so there's sort of a relationship with that, but she has that like infamous quote about being a man herself. Like she is a rich man. She doesn't have to marry one. The idea is that she is an agent all on her own. Right. But that said, I think some people handle fame better than others. Um, some people have a relationship with it that sort of makes sense for their brain better than others. Now, let's look at Margaret Choi has a, a conversation about this. That she decided to post five days ago, ironically enough, before Chapel Roan even posted her video. Margaret posted this, which was so perfectly timed for what Chapel is going through. And Margaret, as you guys know, or maybe don't, is a legendary queer comedian I watched everything she ever put out when I was a younger person trying to find myself. I heavily considered becoming a comedian myself. Obviously, I was meant to be a YouTuber, but I was wondering, like, what am I supposed to do, you know? And she has something to say. This is so funny. She wrote, she literally came out with this five days ago before Chapel's video, which is kind of insane. So here it is. I've been in show business for about 42 years. And what I noticed is that the people who uh, were the most talented, the most brilliant, the most beautiful, didn't make it. They uh, dipped, like, because I think there was something about it. I think that when people are truly exceptional, what isn't exceptional is their stamina. And um, the people that did make it 
were people who just stuck with it and also didn't allow the opinions of other people get in the way of their dreams for themselves, which is a big deal, you know? And um, so a lot of times, like, I think, like, the people that I've seen that were, like, the most star-like, you'll never know about because they just... I think we were born that way. I mean, there's a couple of exceptions, like the rare exceptions. and um, But for the most part, it was the people that really just stuck with it and made their dream bigger than anything else in their life. So that's just my advice. Um, dream big. I think this is so interesting because you do – like it begs a question of who – makes it and who doesn't and who pursues a career and who doesn't get to. And, you know, I can't tell you how many times people told me to quit. I mean, people tell me to quit right now. Like people will literally write me messages and be like, I don't get why you still do YouTube. Like you literally are, it's not working because in their head for it to work, I would have to be famous or popular. I have a big program or there's something about versions of success that in my brain, I'm literally trying to avoid. Like the ironies, I'm trying to make my dollar bills go up, not my necessarily my fame. I'm trying to make my money go up, not my not my popularity. And that's my business strategy because I'm a pretty private person. I really like leaving the house and not worrying. They people don't re, don't like they don't think about the fact that like when I'm with other YouTubers who are much much bigger than me in status, they will avoid going to certain parts of town because they don't want to have to deal with maybe meeting up with fans or people recognizing them. I don't want to have to worry about that. And I used to, you know, have that feeling slightly in Seattle because people would recognize me a little bit more. But since I'm not in that kind of a place, I don't have to think about it. And that's kind of by design. You know, I think people forget that there are different levels to everyone's career and you have to decide what game you're playing. Some people are reaching for the stars, like absolutely famous, recognizable everywhere they go. And other people are just looking for something a little bit more middle class. You got to ask yourself what game you're playing. Some people said um, Chapel obviously really liked what she was doing before and she just wasn't prepared for fame, which I think is valid. Like maybe she wasn't sort of made for fame, but also you you might not know that until you have it. Everyone, you know, a lot of people think fame sounds amazing. What could go wrong? You feel trapped. You feel like you're in a cage for some people, not for all people. Okay, now let's look at Drew. Drew also chimed in. I want to talk to y'all about something serious and also topical. And if there's time, sure, I'll drag a man. Fuck it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Anyways, a lot of people have been commenting on the video or DMing me personally, asking me my thoughts on Chapel Rowan's videos that she just posted today. If you haven't seen them, please go watch them. The gist of the videos, though, is basically her saying that she doesn't like being harassed in public, regardless if you're a fan or not, and how it makes her really uncomfortable and she shouldn't have to get used to it, which I, first of all, 100% fucking agree with. Now, I assume a lot of people are tagging me or asking me my thoughts on it because she was on my show the comment section and we mm -hmm. talked about that almost the entire time you went into extensive detail about how she has been struggling with this aspect of her like meteoric rise and now that she's put it on tiktok i'm seeing a lot of discourse about it and of course people are asking so i'm gonna tell you my thoughts but i need you to keep two things in mind right first things first this is not me saying in any way shape or form that i am of the same caliber of fame as chapel Run. she's an actual celebrity i am but a um i think drew has more followers on tiktok so I think, than Chapel does, right? Am I crazy? It doesn't matter. The point is Adele, Elton John, huge celebrities have mentioned Chapel recently. And I think that must be intimidating too. Like in some ways, these big celebrities calling you out is like an, like an oh my gosh, like I'm being recognized. And then the downside of it is like, oh my gosh, I'm being recognized. And now people are going to know me and these big celebrities are talking about me and their audience is going to come and judge and decide if they like me. And there's a lot of pressure that Chapel's probably feeling. So again, you know, a shout out is beautiful, but a shout out also comes with sort of the responsibility of the possibility of new people finding you and not understanding you, right? Especially for someone like Chapel or somebody who starts off really small in a niche community, you build a community that makes sense to you. You have a cohesiveness with it, a symbiosis, and then a new community comes into yours and they don't know who you are, right? So now you're having sort of a, a new relationship with self, which I think is sort of what Chapel's going through where she had her niche community, people understood her and her vibe and everything she was doing. And then boom, she hits like a mainstream and now everyone's got an opinion, which I understand because I literally run a YouTube show 
where we talk about our opinions and we have, you know, we have these conversations, right? So we talk about people and we're talking about, so I get it that I'm a part of that system or that soup bowl of content creators that talks about people because they're trending. I mean, look at Drew, Drew's doing, we, you know what I mean? We're, we're content creators. So I get it. This is also not me saying this is the hardest job in the world and nobody understands because I'm not a f***ing dumbass and that's just simply not true. Keep those two mm -hmm. things top mm -hmm. of mind, all right? Now, I can't speak to Chapel's experience, obviously, but I can speak to mine as someone who was an aggressively normal bitch before I started doing this for the last three years. I did not grow my platform until I was like in my mid-20s and I have worked many jobs, okay? From food service all the way to nine to five corporate and everything in between. And I can tell you with the utmost conviction at this point that no amount of jobs, regardless of what industry they are in, could ever prepare you for the problems you encounter doing this for a I believe that. Thank you so much, Johnson, for another super chat. You said, here's a few more. Love your content. Appreciate that. I think Drew is right. And I agree with her. It's not like it's the hardest job in the world. It's just like a really weird job. Like nothing makes sense. Like you just feel a, a deep anxiety that maybe other people don't feel in other fields, like other fields, maybe people feel comfortable giving their name out or their number, or they feel good telling you where they work. Like that's not how it works as a content creator. As a content creator, you don't tell people what you do or you socialize different or you don't, I don't know why, because people are weird. Just like Chapel's experiencing, no matter how small of a content creator you are, you will get weirdos in your audience. And people are just strange. Like they're strange little animals, you know? Shout out to Misery Chick for gifting members. No, gifted one. Yeah, for gifting memberships. Thank you. Jack, you are blessed with a membership. Welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. There is no employee handbook for what to do when you're being perceived by millions of people every day of your entire life. You mm -hmm. don't just have a job. You are the job. You, your name, your presence, your talent, whatever it is you have to offer the world of entertainment, you are your job and you are your company and you are your brand. So whether you're working or not, you are being perceived constantly for better or for worse. And you don't have a say in any of it. You don't get a say. Oh my God, wait, Discord, crazy. I want to read this. True, you don't have a say in it. Discord said my grandpa got famous where when my mom was a kid and people showed up to her school, mo mobbed him with two young kids and tore his shirt off. His work changed my family's financial trajectory from extreme poverty, but they were definitely costs. I've heard of that. Even with the Shay Carl and his kids, you know, people would stalk the kids at school and thought it was cute to run into the children at school. And I was like... <laughs> It's not cute though, right? It's like really weird, but people are weird. Like humans are strange and that's the problem. I mean, gosh, no matter how well you run your community, no matter how well you try to keep boundaries, no matter how well you try to do things, things get messy, especially with human beings. And it's not just in, like the messiness is, exists in every work industry period. Like it just happens everywhere. And I'm not opposed to the messiness. I think what we would love, though, is some sort of like strong boundaries, especially like around children or maybe around following people to their car or stalking people. It's like, geez, you know, I'm, I get drama will happen no matter what job you're in. But can we like maybe not stalk, maybe not bother kids, maybe think about the relationships we're having, you know, with other people. So, again, I want a thousand percent sympathize and empathize with the public figure downside of doing this job. Now, do we always say it's always worth it no matter what? Like, yeah. Like, ultimately, we all have to make sacrifices or take the bad with the good. Even Jordan Peterson recently was saying, like, he doesn't drink anymore for a lot of reasons. But one especially is that he can't afford to make mistakes. And he feels like there's a great pressure on him to be performance ready, basically. And God forbid he has, like, a moment of weakness, right? Because, like, he's had plenty of those. But it always turns out bad. It does. And I think that he's right to some extent that it is – it can be very scary and it can be very hard to decide how to do this job without feeling like you're also putting your family at risk or other people in your life, which also sucks. But OK, let's go back to Drew. Saying how you're being perceived and you don't even get a say in how people treat you in public. Like, for example, for me, I've had to change doctors three times. I've had to change gynecologists twice. I had to change my bank twice. I once had someone ask me for a picture when I thought my dog was dying on an operating table. It was someone who worked in the veterinary office. 
Do you see what I'm saying? Even recently, someone said that I was really rude to them in an airport because I told them I'm about to miss my flight. I'm sorry, I can't talk. And this is just a side note, but the reason I was running late for my flight that day was because TSA rejected half my family and was being really racist towards my family. So my family was very shaken, very unhappy, very afraid, and we were sprinting to a gate and someone tried to stop me. And I feel like when public people try to have these conversations, there's always this undertone of like, oh, mm, the, yeah, exactly. Because people who aren't in this position and they've never known anyone. See, I've known enough people in my life who have had some form of fame to know that it comes with a huge price. And that price is usually privacy. And that price is people hating you because they feel entitled. As introspective as I'd love to think everybody in my audience is, I've had enough problems with people to know that's not the case. But also everybody talks different and we communicate differently and things are going to get confusing and people are going to feel entitled. Remember, if your family and friends feel entitled, strangers are definitely going to feel entitled because they're having a more parasocial relationship with you, right? So this is the problem. Like I, I know this happens. I've seen this happen to other people where they are rushing. They have to go, what about, excuse me, Kevin Hart had to go to the bathroom. He was rushing into the bathroom and a man put a camera over the toilet seat and filmed him while he was going potty. Like, that's so f***ed up. Like, the most vulnerable situation for a person to be. How would you like it if somebody did that to you? Just because you were famous. And that's why they did it. They did it because he was famous. And I was just mortifying. Just a mortifying. And that's just human beings. Human beings regardless of how wonderful and logical and perfect they think they are, they're just like a hot mess. So again, I think the entitlement is the problem and treating people like it's a big deal. And look, when you grew up, you know, in Orange County, you grew up in LA, you do see celebrities sometimes, or you'll be at Disneyland and you'll see celebrities with hats on and they're trying to have a day with their family. It's very nice just to leave them alone. It's fine if the celebrity's kind of okay with the interaction, but a lot of the time it's just good to like, maybe do a silent nod or maybe just like not make a big deal out of it or because again, you don't want all those people also rushing towards people. You know, you don't think about the safety element because you're so busy thinking about the fact that you're seeing a person, but like, it's just a person. It's just a person. Oh, you're so ungrateful. Oh, I would love if fans came up to me and told me that they loved me. But see, what you're failing to factor in is those aren't the encounters that we're ever talking about. When we're saying this makes me really uncomfortable, we're talking about all of the other ones outside of that. Like when someone physically grabbed me from behind to turn me around really fast and shake me and tell me that she needed a picture with me. That oh kind of God. shit isn't normal and isn't okay. And when you are someone who's trying to assert a boundary like that as a public person with love and grace and understanding, the least fans can do is offer empathy because you guys have no idea how dehumanizing it feels to be treated like a zoo animal mm -hmm. everywhere you go. It feels as if your autonomy is being stripped. And someone like Chapel, who I know, okay is a very good person a very genuine person who genuinely loves her fans very much the worst part about this feeling is that no one understands what it feels like unless they do it for a living and you mm -hmm. care so deeply about your fans that you don't want them to ever think you're ungrateful for them or you don't for sure you don't want anyone to feel like you're ungrateful i want to be very grateful every day but also i'm open with boundaries right um hold on chat asked a good question but what if we but like if we stop glamorizing celebs what makes them different um well it used to be their talents to some extent it used to be the thing that made them stick out i don't think i have to glamorize people to enjoy celebrities myself so i don't know if i'm just having a different experience with celebrities but i just see them as content creators like if they're actors, they're just content creators. Like if they're just, if they're like debate bros, they're content creators. Like to me, they're just people. So I think the problem is, is that I personally don't, I didn't grow up in a celebrity culture household. My parents always reminded me that people were, no matter who they were, they were just people. So if we had like the president over, they're just people. You know, yes, ch chat says they're just people doing a job. They're just people doing a job. So personally, I like the relationship I have with famous people, which is to treat them like you would treat everybody else. Like when I go to McDonald's, I don't fan service over the employee and I wouldn't need to do that with a celebrity. I would just say, hey, thanks for your work. I really like your work. And the same way you would tell a, a McDonald's employee, thank you for your work. I really appreciate it. Okay, you could tell that to a singer without going crazy. But I do think, and I think this is the thing that people aren't saying, if you want to be a mega celebrity like Taylor Swift, you're going to need them to love you. 
You're going to need them to worship you. You're going to need them to be crazy. That's the only way it works. If you want to be mega famous, you're going to need some crazy fans. And that is the truth that I don't think mega celebrities are willing to talk about. See, Chapel Roan is not a mega celebrity. She's just not, right? She's not famous enough. Drew isn't a mega celebrity, and they probably will never be, right? They'll probably never have 300 million followers on Instagram. But for the ones that are, yeah. The, yeah. Like, that's how you reach the fame status that you reach. That's why Ryan Reynolds is so famous. That's why people are so famous, you know? And so I think that's what we need to contend with. Like, yeah, like, okay, like the Kardashians. You guys are saying some celebs are famous for being fa- um, for being famous and would die out without attention. Well, but that's the thing. If you want to be Kim Kardashian, you can become Kim Kardashian. You could do it. Go ahead and do it, right? But that's the thing. Do we want to do it. And I don't think it's wrong right? Like I am not offended that, oh, that there are like these famous celebrities, right? Um, oh, excuse me. Chat said mega celebrities make shit music. Um, you take that back because that's Celine Dion. That's Whitney Houston. Um, you take that back. Some mega celebrities make some of the best music in the whole world. God rest Whitney Houston soul. Okay. Celine Dion, may God bless her for always and ever. But like some of these mega celebrities are amazing. Cher is a mega celebrity, right? Like I, I will not talk shit on my, on my ladies, but also, um, I don't mind the Kardashians. I'm not one of their fans, but also I'm indifferent. I don't care. You know, I think the world is a reflection of itself as a whole, right? The world is a reflection of itself as a whole. And that's why I say, if you see something in the world, you don't like, it just is a reflection of a certain part of the population that made it accessible and popular. Right. So that's how I look at it personally. But yeah, I just, I think that's why, and I will say for my, I think because of my attitude, I actually, ironically enough, I'm not going to lie to you guys. I got a lot of people in my DMs and a part of it is because they know I don't give, at least that's the impression I get from everybody. I'm just saying when you fangirl, you send a red flag out and your celebrities like Billie Eilish ran into this problem recently, right? Where she was nice to one of her fans and the fan took it too far and joked that she was going to date Billie Eilish and Billie had to like block her and stuff. If you learn some boundaries, And if you were a regular person, well-adjusted person, you could have networking opportunities or just like, just be treated like a person. You don't want to talk to them or you never want to take pictures with because that's not the case for her. She just wants to be able to live her life without being forced to compromise her boundary. Because contrary to what people tend to say when this argument is brought up, no, she did not sign up for this. But what I think is most important to remember, whether it's Chapel or another influencer or anyone that you love, they are actual humans with thoughts and feelings and fears and anxiety. They are actual humans who have good days and bad days. They are not a figment of your imagination. They're not an idea. They're not just a thing that you are entitled to. They are people that deserve respect the same way that you do. You feel me? And if all of that was too much to digest, here's a simple rule of thumb to go by if you meet famous people, influencers, what the fuck ever. Just don't be fucking weird, okay? Don't be weird, don't be creepy, don't be over familiar. Nine times out of 10, it's gonna go good for you, I promise. That's what it is, it's the over familiar. Don't be over familiar with people you don't know. Thomas, if you follow that simple rule, I swear to God, nine times out of 10, I'm sure it will be fine. And everyone leave chapel the f- alone, I swear to God. Hey, love you, bye. Okay, agree with that. And again, if you're thinking about it right now, if you're like, hey, I'm thinking about being a content creator, I'm thinking about getting into this, I'm thinking about doing something. Like I'm going through Julia Fox's autobiography, like her her memoir, I guess, or her memoir. And I'm listening to the audiobook, and it's interesting. I thank God every day I didn't grow up like Julia Fox did. And I'm really lucky that I that I don't have her lived experiences. It was tough. Like, it's a little too tough for me. It's not the toughest. People have had it harder, but it was a lot. Like, as I'm listening to this book, I'm like, you know, I'm very grateful for my conservative parents that were mad I listened to, like, music with cuss words because it did help me avoid a lot of neglect, I think, in other ways. Not that it was perfect, because God knows. But... I think about that and how it contributes to people skyrocketing to fame. What did I say? The right amount of dysfunction with the right amount of motivation can make you very famous. Trisha, Tana, Julia, with the right amount of the combination. I really do think it skyrockets you into fame. Johnny Depp, all those actors you hear about, they did not have good lives. Even Iron Man, 
Um, even, um, what's his name? He said, uh, he was winning an award and he said, I would like to thank my traumatic childhood for getting me here. And I think that's really true. I think there's something about that. Now, of course, lots of people who experience trauma never get famous. Robert Downey Jr., thank you. And the same way that some healthy adjusted people do reach fame, right? So it's, it's never all or nothing. So there's just like the right combination, right? There's like this right combination of dye that just gets you to this this fame. And for a lot of people, they would say, I'll take a traumatic childhood if I could be famous and rich. Oh my gosh, I would cut off my arm. How many of you would be willing to cut off your left arm if it guaranteed you like $50 billion? What do you need a left arm for? Do you really need it? Would you do it? But you're not willing to cut off your left arm without that guarantee of the $50 million because that's crazy. And for a lot of people, trying to get famous is like cutting off your left arm and you don't even know if you're gonna actually get the money that goes along with what you assume fame will bring you. Like that's what's kind of funny is like fame doesn't guarantee money. So you've be- you better com- combine the two. I mean, look at Kanye and all these other people. They're famous, but they are running out of money. What what's that big rumor about um dun, 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 dun. what's his name? What's the guy that just did a song with Lady Gaga again? He was like 50 million in debt, and everyone's like, I can't believe he's so bad with money. Lots of celebrities are famous and very much in debt. So just Bruno Mars, thank you. So just remember, right? That there isn't always the benefit of money just because of fame. So for Chapel Roan and her it, um her particular relationship with these things, I would say that it's very relatable and I wonder what she'll do with it. I hope she doesn't stop making music, but I also respect whatever she does. Whatever she does, I hope it works out for her because that's all that matters. Discord says, I worked at a five-star restaurant in Lodge and we always had celebrities come and we were told to greet them and not act like creepy fans around them or we would be fired. We had an NBC um, come in with a celebrity and had a huge meeting about how to behave. Uh, I think most of us were more nervous to be around them. We did not want to run into them in the hallways. Yeah, I could see that. Like I could see the nervousness, but I kind of like the idea of like firing people for being unprofessional because I think that's sort of the issue is there's sort of a level of professionality that I think we have in a society that is just, you know, kind of a signal of trust. I trust you to act accordingly. Now, remember, some people do want fame because they want to be showered with that validation and that love. And they want to be sort of swarmed by the masses. They even might get a thrill at being stalked. It's just not most people because most people aren't that crazy. Because that's crazy. It is somewhat crazy to want people to know you. And that's why we talk about in philosophy, like the sense of the ego. And remember a lot of philosophers died before they even reached like the fame we think of them having now. They had maybe some fame, right? Think of the writers and poets who died without ever having fame. You know, they might be famous now, but it's different. And then there were a couple of people, but that's why, you know, we talk about legacy a lot. Do you wanna keep your legacy alive because your name is alive or because the work you did was amazing? Are you proud of the work you did or do you want to do work that's so good your name gets recognized? And then there's those of us who just want to stay on earth for the time we're here, create something beautiful and peace out. I think Chaperone's probably in that category where she's just doing stuff that means something to her and she's going to peace out. But I think that's a very important question to ask yourself, whether you're a teacher or a nurse or a mom or just a person in the community, you should ask yourself, what is my goal with doing this thing that I've decided to do? So many people feel trapped in their jobs and they dream of a job where there's fancy clothes and fancy food and sounds like a whole different kind of a trap. Fame and wealth is a different bubble of a trap. And so you have to make sure if you're gonna have a relationship with it, you have a really good relationship with it. Discord said, didn't Gaga recently say something about how she wanted fame but misses freedom? Mm. Yeah, Gaga definitely wanted to be famous but I, I wouldn't be surprised if she does miss the freedom of it all. It must be hard. I certainly don't envy that position. I, it sounds stressful. It sounds stressful to never be able to leave the house or drive a car. Like, do you know how many celebrities can't drive a car anymore? Because if they get in a car accident with somebody and somebody realizes they're a celebrity, it's like an insurance issue. Like think about all, you don't think about the freedoms you lose when you get famous because they're things we take for granted. Like being independent, leaving the house whenever. Just, just being able to what, take a walk in your neighborhood. That's why celebrities also move to gated communities or they move to places where they can take a walk and they're, they're just in a neighborhood full of celebrities. So then the irony is you look at these celebrities and you think, why can't they just like live in a normal neighborhood? Because you won't let them. You won't let them. I was watching my realtor show on Netflix and there was a football player and he saw a house in Newport 
And he said, hey, I love this house, but I need it to be in a gated community because of my level of fame. I'm concerned about people showing up to the house. And that's a different budget. Like, you better hope that if you become famous, you're rich enough to buy security or you're rich enough to get into a gated community or you're rich enough to move to a place where people don't know you. I think that's the thing that people take. They they don't understand. Like, if you get famous before you get rich, that's a pretty scary position to be in. You just have no protection, you know? And then when you're rich, you have to spend all that money on that protection. Sounds frustrating. Oh, sounds frustrating. The entitlement reminds me of the Kidology stalker situation. The entitlement just comes from a place of thinking you belong in someone's life in a way that I think is deeply misunderstood by your own perception. It's very confusing to me how people do this, regardless if they're fans or friends or whatever. But there is always like a sense of entitlement in people's lives, right? There is a sense of entitlement that comes from, I think, their, I don't even know, I don't even think they're malicious all the time, but I think some people genuinely want to connect and they feel really like they know something about somebody, But all they know is their perception. And that can be very convincing that you know. It can be very, very convincing that your perception is so good you know. The inner workings of a person. But that's the lie we tell ourselves. I can read minds. You can't read minds. You're just hoping you're right. Which is why they say never meet your heroes. Because when you do, you realize how wrong you were about them. Also, I think something that's important, right, is anyone can be famous now. And it's not just for celebrities, right? You can be a regular Joe and hit fame like Hawk to a girl, right? Chat mentioned her or just other people. This is why I say with peace and love, unless you are making money on social media, why would you put your face in the public? Is You guys got to tell me, what is the reason you want to put your face in the public? Am I like, this is, this is like the downside is my face matters. The downside is that I've decided for it to matter. It's too late. I can't. I can't make content now without a face. Like people know my voice. Like, I mean, it's to the point where I'm sure you guys all know streamers voices. Like I'm pretty sure I don't have to look at the computer to know Tom Fleury's talking, right? So I'm just dying to know, right? Because if I could go back and redo my career, I would be faceless. That is the one thing I would significantly change about my life is I would be faceless. That is the one thing that I wish I had done. I wish I was just another faceless YouTuber who created like, I don't know, a brand. I probably would have in some ways been more successful than in others just because like there's a lot to an image, you know, kind of interesting. But at the same time, obviously, I'm very happy with how things have gone. Do you regret doing OF? Um, I don't regret doing OF. I still would have done OF and I still would have done Instagram. I just wouldn't have made my face the focus. I would have done art. I would have probably drawn. I would have probably done very specific kinds of art because I still love the art that I do. Like I'm really proud of my OF shoots. I'm really proud of the work that I do. I'm really happy with the stuff that I create. And I think I just would have figured out how to create it without being without my face being important. And I think that would have been really good, you know? I think that would have been so much fun, but it's too late now. So now it's just like, you got to make the best out of it and enjoy it for what it is. But yeah, if I could have gone back, I would have done the same work that I'm doing. I just would have, I probably would have, yeah, drawn or painted or done something different. But man, the, I mean, I was what, 19, I think when I made my first video, maybe 20, maybe I was like 20 or 21. I've been doing this for a really long time. Chad says, not having social media is very nice for my brain. I love Googling my name and nothing comes up. I love that. I love that. Oh, that's so funny. That is kind of comforting, huh? There's something about it where I know there's, look, there's probably a lot of joy in being famous. Uh, Just not for all of us. And definitely not for Chapel. I hope she figures out what to do with it though, because it's going to be hard. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of breathing
reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool. Thank you.